Rupa, one of the things I've noticed recently is that some of the better sort of reporting and opinion pieces on Canada and specifically on Justin Trudeau come from abroad. Um, you know, we had during the trucker convoy, the New York Times uh, reporting on things that that several times legacy media journalists, people like Rosemary Barton at the CBC, uh, were, would, were openly criticizing and telling the New York Times to take this down because it's, it's wrong. Well, it wasn't wrong. It just didn't fit with the Trudeau narrative. Uh, you know, the idea that they were breaking into vehicles and arresting people at gunpoint. That was sort of like an inconvenient story that that um, the Canadian media didn't want. Uh, w- one of the other things I've noticed is a sort of disconnect between so in Canada, if, if you say that Justin Trudeau is acting like a dictator or that Canada is going do, to, down a tyrannical or authoritarian path, uh, the media sort of like cr- clutch their pearls and say like, that's reckless and, and uh, you know, hyperbolic. How dare you? Uh, m- more and more, we're hearing that opinion um, being taken from people uh, around the world, outside observers, uh, people who are critical of, of Trudeau. And uh, I saw that you shared a, a piece by Rav Arora, who's a great young writer from Vancouver. He wrote a piece in the New York Post um, titled, Once a Liberal Democracy, Canada is Now an Authoritarian State. So it's a great piece. I encourage reader, uh, viewers to go out and read it. Uh, Rav argues that Canadian government has taken away, has taken its power to extreme levels. He tells a story about how he almost wasn't allowed back into Canada, um, despite um, you know being a Canadian. And um, he, he also makes a point saying that, you know, his family left India when he was a child and he feels that, you know, Canada is not necessarily more free than India. Um, I'm wondering uh, if, you, if you can give us your, your thoughts on, on Rav's piece and, and sort of generally that direction that not, not only is Canada heading towards this direction, but you don't see these kind of uh, opinion pieces much in Canada. Increasingly, you are seeing them around the world, though. Uh, exactly. I uh, very much enjoyed Rav's piece and I shared it, um, um, you know, I shared a very uh, important quote from the tweet where he says that, you know, the, the country that my parents left behind, India, um, you know, seems a lot less authoritarian than Canada at this point because he's unvaccinated and he can't get on a plane and uh, and he's essentially a prisoner in his own country. I think that's, um, I, you know, I'm very um, uh, sympathetic to that point of view. Um, I, 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 you know, I know a lot of unvaccinated people and they're really struggling. It's, um, they, you, and Canada is an outlier in this regard. Um, uh, India, a country that I'm also very familiar with, having spent a lot of time there, has no vaccine mandates uh, in place. In fact, the Supreme Court of India said that vaccine mandates um, were uh, were unconstitutional. And uh, in, a, in a recent rule, Ruling, um, and uh, that um, you know you can't uh, and and and, and uh, emphasized on the importance of bodily autonomy. Uh, it was an extraordinary ruling, and um, and it makes made me question why uh, you know what is happening with our courts here. You know why aren't we seeing this kind of um, uh, you know why aren't we seeing this sort of thing happening here? Uh, and 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 so a lot of people like Rav, you know, feel that the country that they grew up in, and I, I will say this as someone who spent um, 25 years, uh, you know, I came here as a teenager and I've been, you know, and I've been here for, uh, for, a, for a long time. And I can tell you that I don't recognize this country anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't um, uh, recognize what, it, you know, I don't understand what is happening here. I don't know why Canada is an outlier here. Of course, there are problems with India. I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, India is necessarily freer than Canada. I I think that would be a little bit of an exaggeration if one were to say that. But one can certainly point to the fact that um, Canada is heading in the wrong direction. It is an outlier in the advanced West. It's an outlier among major countries in insisting on um, vaccine mandates, on the two-dose a vaccine mandate, which makes absolutely no sense. You have um, uh, research uh, upon research coming up from various credible uh, health agencies from across the world, whether it's the CDC, whether it's the UK, uh, or it's the UK Health Authority uh, or UK Health Agency, that show that the two-dose vaccine uh, regimen is actually not very effective at this point. Where if you've done two doses, um, you're 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 really the vaccine effectiveness has essentially gone down to zero. So 
but but the diff but the thing is i can get on a plane uh and i can uh, apply for a federal government job uh but the unvaccinated can't and that's the, the and that's what's um very cruel about the situation um and 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 also we've we've completely ignored the fact that um a lot of unvaccinated people probably have um a great deal of natural immunity at this point at this point everyone's more or less been infected and so you have uh, immunity from vaccination and you also have immunity from having recovered from COVID-19. Um, yet, yet the government insists on these vaccine mandates, which absolutely make no sense. So I, I appreciate where he's coming from, where Rav Aurora is coming from, and um, I sympathize with it. And it is an absolutely frustrating situation to be in. 